and Amy Goodman. Japan has raised the severity rating of its nuclear crisis to the highest level, matching the 1986 Chernobyl nuclear disaster. The level 7 rating signifies a major nuclear accident. At a news conference today, an official from the Tokyo Electric Power Company said, quote, the radiation leak has not stopped completely, and our concern is that it could eventually exceed Chernobyl. For an update on the situation, we go to Tokyo. Thomas Brewer, head of the Climate and Energy Unit for Greenpeace Germany, joins us by Democracy Now! video stream. He's part of a field team of radiation monitors in Japan. Thomas Brewer, Greenpeace has been talking about the situation being more severe for a number of weeks now. Explain what it means for Japan to lift the crisis level from five to the very highest, to seven. Yeah, maybe, maybe first of all, the uh, the idea from the INIS uh, scale, which was introduced after the Chernobyl accident, is exactly to uh, inform the public in a timely manner. And uh, Greenpeace has done has done calculations with uh, with scientists uh, already three weeks ago, where we figured out that uh, this accident is an INIS scale seven accident. And we, we are wondering why the government of Japan needs uh, three weeks to come to the same conclusion, especially because they must have be, uh, way better data than, uh, than we have. So um, what, what it means now, they wasted three weeks of not informing uh, the public about the, the real, real risks of this uh, accident. Now, though, talk about what seven means. I mean, we're talking about the continuing nuclear catastrophe that's unfolding in Japan um, being equal to the worst nuclear disaster in history, Chernobyl. So, so from my point of view, it is not, it is not equal to, uh, to Chernobyl. It is uh, way worse. Because we are uh, like facing uh, three uh, reactors uh, totally or partly destroyed. A fourth reactor uh, has problem with the uh, with suspend uh, fuel, which uh, had a huge explosion. And uh, when we did the calculations like uh, three weeks ago, we um, we we figured out that uh, de depending, of course, uh, about the spread between the three reactors. Each of these reactors could be uh, rated as an INIS scale 7 accident because the INIS uh, scale does not even consider a uh, multiple accident, what we have seen here in, uh, in Fukushima. So uh, that is uh, way worse uh, than what, we, uh, what we've seen in Chernobyl. Another point there, which is very important, so in Chernobyl was um, more or less rural area around the reactor. But uh, Fukushima is in a densely populated uh, area, so millions of people are living around it. So uh, even that makes it uh, worse and uh, more difficult to manage. What do you think Japan needs to do right now? So uh, there are uh, urgency uh, measures. So uh, it is now uh, clear that um, since we did our, uh, our field research, we warned the government that there are a lot of uh, cities and villages outside the 20 uh, kilometers uh, evacuation zone where the radiation levels are so high that people need uh, urgently to be evacuated, especially uh, children and uh, pregnant women, because they are um, the most uh, vulnerable part of the population to radiation. And so uh, they have to do that now. They have to, to screen the whole Fukush Fukushima uh, area. Well, where there are other hot spots which need to be evacuated. And then they have to, uh, what they haven't done so far, really, really explain the people uh, who are still living there what to do, how to behave. So we were approached from a lot of farmers during our uh, field uh, work, asking us whether we can come to their fields and do food testing because they have uh, no idea whether they still can eat the food or sell it uh, or whatsoever. So that's a very difficult situation. We have been in Fukushima city. That's a city with uh, 340,000 inhabitants. And we found a very high levels of radiation in the city uh, all over uh, again. But uh, life seems to be like uh, on the surface, like, uh, like normal life. And that has to do with the fact that the uh, government did not put out uh, information how to behave, what to do. So people are uh, really left alone with this uh, accident, which uh, 
was not caused by them. Thomas Brewer, you're in Tokyo right now, uh, but you head the Climate and Energy Unit for Greenpeace Germany. You're speaking to me in the United States, um, where our president, President Obama, is um, really pushing a nuclear renaissance for the first time in decades, pushing for the building of nuclear power plants. Talk about the response around the world to what's happened in Japan. So it's not understandable uh, how one can push for uh, for nuclear uh, renaissance, especially if you uh, dig into the, the whole uh, industry. It's, uh, first of all, not uh, compatible with uh, democracy, because the open societies we are uh, living in, they, are, they cannot um, deal with, uh, with, with nuclear, because they are so vulnerable to terrorism and uh, to, to accidents that there will be always a clash with uh, democracy at the end of the day. And um, so Obama should look uh, what is happening in Germany. So Angela Merkel, even though she uh, she used to be uh, quite pro-nuclear uh, as well, after the accident, she uh, she understood the, the real risks of nuclear power plant, and she closed down immediately eight uh, of the 17 uh, reactors in Germany. And I think that's uh, that's a responsible way to deal with nuclear. It has to be closed down. I want to thank you, Thomas Brewer, for joining us, head of the Climate and Energy Unit for Greenpeace Germany, part of the field team of radiation monitors in Tokyo, Japan. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report.